What's up, everybody? It's me, Jacob. The first regional since COVID happened this weekend, uh, and I'm going to watch the finals match with you guys, break it down. I watched this live, but wasn't really paying attention, so I'm going to really take a look, analyze it. I got permission from both Chungyun and Aaron to watch, uh, to, uh, to react to their championship, because I know some people don't really like being talked about on the internet by a stranger. So let's get right into it. Than maybe some of the other opponents I'm gonna skip to round one, or the first match. For some context, uh, Chong Young has not lost a game yet uh, at the start of this tournament. He has been playing insanely well during the whole thing, and let's see if he can go through it. And it's a classic Kyogre versus Groudon matchup. So we got... I'll let the commentators do some of the work here. The Incineroar is gonna land the important Intimidate, though down onto the Zacian right after the Intrepid Sword. Indeed, his Psychic Surge is something that Aaron really likes to get set up just because it means that the Incineroar can't fake out and you get a little more wiggle room to play the game in turns one and potentially later on in the game when you know Incineroar can sometimes switch out, switch back in, and then lay down another fake out. So we do really see nice here that Aaron and Chang Young's uh, Zacians are either speed tying or Chang Young's is faster. faster there. Um, but the Ndidi able to, to draw a lot of pressure away with something like the follow me, that's always a problem for players who, who want to lay down that damage, and that could leave Aaron Zashin free to just throw down some attacks. I like Incineroar realizing its use is just the Intimidate for now, and being forced to leave the field. It's a lot of pressure on. Just going away immediately as we do see the Groudon switch in and set the sun. So the Weathered Wars have begun as Ndidi goes for the follow me to draw away the Zacian's attention, knowing that it is going to be doing more damage than Aaron's Zacian. This probably one shots. See how much this Behemoth Blade really can do. As this is why I don't love redirection users for myself personally, is because I'm not good it. enough uh, to know <laughs> when to use my one Pokemon to just get one hit is by a turn and allow a big move to go down the sacred sword into the ground on though really not the amount of sacred sword's been picking up in popularity recently uh and at first i didn't realize why but then i noticed every single incineroar i saw on stream this weekend was running shooka berry uh now when incineroar is running a citrus berry sacred sword's a three shot just like play rough is uh, but with the Shuka Berry, instead of the Citrus, without that recovery, Sacred Sword two shots, uh, which I think is a huge deal. And probably why you're seeing a lot of Sacred Swords again. Damage, just Aaron, uh, probably looking for something to switch in and help out. I like the Kyogre, I've talked about it so many times this weekend. Bring your Kyogre in after the Groudon has shown up, and then you get control of the weather until the Groudon switches out and comes back in. When you're looking over on uh, Chongjun's side of the field, yes, we've seen the Incineroar, but... What is the fourth Pokemon? I imagine it has to be a choice between Charizard and Gastrodon. If it's Gastrodon, this is a real easy choice. Bring it in now, get the Storm Drain to, to eat up that attack, and get your Groudon back in a little bit later. So Aaron, forced down to three, does limit his switching options, which makes this Kyogre slightly harder to play. Maybe a little bit, and especially when you think about the speed as well. You know, Aaron's likely not going to want to opt to go for a water spell. Probably going to take some damage there, but we do see the Kartana switch in. Really hoping that, you know, Kartana can stick around, and the Groudon also switching. So Weather Setter's going back to their Weather Pokeballs, War. and here is that Gastrodon. A play rough now coming through, connecting onto the Kartana, dealing about 40%. And now it's time for Zacian to dish out another Behemoth Blade here. Aaron Zacian gonna go ahead and attack Chongjun Zacian, and that's gonna deal a significant chunk. Yeah, but you can see the Intimidate and just how impactful it is. It means that the Zacian over on Chongjun's side might just be able to take two of them. Uh, oh no, I don't think it will, but it's gonna be close, whatever it is. I'm not quick enough with my numbers there, and this is so much repositioning from Aaron. He's just not quite getting a, a grip on the game of what he wants, and Chongjun's just able to start throwing down attacks. There's another set of switches. The Weather Setter's switched out in the last turn. Uh, this isn't the Weather Setter coming in, though, for Chongjun. He's getting back to that Incineroar, really neutralizing that Zacian so nicely. Yeah, Aaron Zacian is now at minus one from those two Intimidates. The Sacred Sword now into the Kyogre, Ooh. deals so much damage to it, bringing it below half. And now a Behemoth Blade once again, targeting down the Zacian. Let's see if it's going to be enough to get the knockout nope. here, and it is not, especially at that minus two, or minus one. Not able to get there. The Intimidate super essential, making sure that there was no damage roll, no variance in there that could 
cost Chongjun dearly by losing his Zacian. The Kyogre coming in as well and losing half of its health, really not great, taking away the ability to water spout. Aaron Zacian has just been suffering all game, throwing out damage, not able to capitalize on it though. The Psychic Terrain still in play does mean the Fake Out isn't an option, but it, that's not what Incineroar's job is right now. Incineroar's job is just keep throwing down Intimidates on the Zacian and keep the Kyogre in check with these Sacred Swords. Another one would be able to get the knockout. Aaron recognizes that that Zacian is going to need to have to be reset. This is an awkward the switch. Cartana out in its place. Because this Cartana is still going to take a huge Kyogre chunk of damage from so anything going into the to jockey for position, anything going into the, the Zacian. The connect into the protect, but the parting shot now also coming through onto the Cartana. So Incineroar is still going to be around to continue to neutralize that Zacian. Incineroar is causing a lot of problems for Aaron. The parting shot there just means, okay, my goal originally was to deal with the Zacian, but now, guess what? I can parting shot and deal with whatever you switch it out for. The Groudon coming right in as well, bringing that drought ability, meaning this Kyogre is pretty much forced to switch out in this turn, and the Kartana, unless it Dynamaxes and can really start turning things around, could be putting itself in a very dicey position. Dynamaxing an intimidated do Kartana doesn't seem Kartana great to me. After it took that parting shot on the way in, it becomes a much harder decision, and Aaron, of course, with one Pokemon already knocked out, doesn't have the ability to switch both of his Pokemon out. So I really like how Chongjun's been playing this game, just steadily wearing down everything on Aaron's side as he tries to get a foothold in this game. Great use of the Incineroar, consistent use of the Zashi, which hasn't been threatened, by the way, uh, with any Intimidates, not something that Aaron brought along. He's been able to capitalize on it. Yeah, Aaron recognizes though that it could be now or never as that Kartana is getting whittled away in HP and despite the attack drop is going to Dynamax here, get access to some really powerful max moves. He can boost back up though. With a max knuckle he could make up for the Intimidate, but, or the parting shot, but the Intimidate's available to come back in and, and completely neutralize it. Both trainers Dynamaxing on this turn though, realizing they have to, to try and push on. I think the Groudon probably wants the Dynamax to make sure it can eat a max overgrowth, if that's what the Kartana decides to throw that way. A minus and one? Absolutely really, really can important. take it. While it's got control of the weather as well. Uh, it doesn't matter though, the Kartana oh. immediately just taken down by the Sacred Sword. Yeah, Kartana unfortunately not going to be able to move into this game. And now the Groudon is very free here. Origin Pulse in the sun will be able to remove the Zacian, but it leaves that Kyogre vulnerable to whatever attack is incoming from this Groudon. That Max Quake now going through to be able to get those special defense boosts, but more importantly, get the knockout onto the Kyogre. And now all that Eren has left in this game, number one, is that Zacian. A Zacian versus three Pokemon, uh, one of which has, uh, or two of which actually, have ground type moves, the Gastrodon available in the back as well. Chongjun's played this game so, so well. Maximum credit to him. Just controlling the board with Incineroar, uh, controlling the weather with the Groudon switches, and, and losing the Ndidi early definitely hurt Aaron. Limiting his switching options didn't get much value out of it either, so something to think about going into game two, but all credit to Chongjun for the way he's handled the game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is such a tough position to be in because it was a lot of repositioning on the board to make sure that you had the right pieces in play. But we will see the forfeit come through from Aaron. And I think game one really came down to that Ndidi's redirection not actually leveraging anything, right? Like, at the end of the turn, what did you have? You were down a Pokemon, you had your Kyogre in, uh, while you knew that uh, Chungjun had his... Uh, Gastrodon, or knew he likely had his Gastrodon sitting around, and you had a minus, sorry, a neutralization, uh, and I think that's really what did him in that game, uh, just put him in a really bad position from the beginning, and with a, when with players are as good as these two are, you can't real he couldn't really rely on outskilling Chong Yun, even if he is a better player, which I'm not sure which one is objectively better, he's not going to be better enough uh, to be able to just outmaneuver in that position, I don't think. And that is game number one of our grand Let's get into the next game. Yeah, very nicely played. It was a clean clinic on how to operate. Game and start to see what these leads are going to look like here. Aaron leading the Finnroar and the Zacian. And for 
Okay, so Aaron adapts, figures out the indeed he probably wasn't worthwhile. Okay, the Gastrodon right up front to say no to Kyoga. Certainly something that Chongjun wants to lay out on the board. But one change I really like from Aaron is bringing the Incineroar. We got to take a look in the last game at how much Intimidate caused a problem. We got a really good example of that given to us. So why wouldn't Aaron try and do it himself? Now his Zashin, yes, it's slower, but from an attack stat perspective, it's in the, it's in the advantage. So, he can be the one, maybe, to throw out the Behemoth Blades and the Sacred Swords. That said, Chongjun's Gastrodon, probably feeling pretty safe, doesn't see the Karpana yet, could just start throwing out Earth Powers, for example, which is going to be good on either of these targets. Comes the Incin. Yeah, but I also really like that, you know, the adjustment from Eren to be able to bring in the Incineroar as well. You were even calling it, maybe Charizard isn't the play for Chongjun, so you're not necessarily as worried about there being Oof. that special attacking a threat as well. But the parting shot comes through just to try to neutralize the Zacian that was there, but it will be the Incineroar instead. And now Eren gets a chance to make a pivot to something else that might be a bit more advantageous for what the board state looks like right now. Nicely done by Chongjun, though, to get the Intimidates going onto the Zacian. Obviously, Aaron was trying to take a leap out of Chongjun's book from game one, parting shotting into those uh, really la, la. frustrating Zacian slots and getting something else after it came in. But Gastrodon throwing out the yawn means Aaron is going to be forced to keep on switching every single turn. If this Gastrodon does th that sort of soft lockout with the yawn that says he can't stay in and attack me because you're going to go to sleep, that's going to be a real big problem. Getting on the Kartana of all things, really good news. That is Kartana big. Is Kartana, Kartana is really important. That Gastrodon does not want to deal with. Yeah, I mean, I could see a world, though, that, you know, Aaron has been a bit unconventional when it comes to his Dynamaxes, and so seeing the Kyogre switch in now in favor of the Zacian, we will see the rain go up, but maybe you are able to get something like a Max Airstream off before the Kartana is put to sleep, but instead we will see preservation of that Kartana in favor of this Incineroar bringing it back in. And so the Intimidates are going to come through, and I'm kind of expecting another yawn here from the Gastron. The Gastrodon can keep that slot locked down. Does protect go for the Protect, too, though. Just in case. Did have to respect that play that you were talking about where Kartana just Dynamaxes anyway and goes for it, right? Even a max overgrowth uh, going through a Protect is, is still going to hurt a whole lot. But now these Incineroar like are just play. so nicely with the parting shots. That Intimidate from Aaron's Incineroar, really not valuable here. And Chongju may be in a great position to bring in. There it is, the Groudon that's not going to be Intimidated. Of course, without the Indeedee in play. With this fake-out uh, pressure, he can just go right back yes, in to the Kartana if he wants. You also want to be being a little bit proactive on this turn and getting your Kyogre away. So you can control the weather later on in the game, I think. And a fake-out and a switch, yeah, it's a fine turn. Or might even be a parting shot. Because I think he knows that this Groudon is Assault Fest. Like a lot to think about if you're Aaron, and once again, Chongjun's making some switches, but I think he's making less than Aaron, and he's just holding that board position exactly where he wants it at most times. I really like the protect from that Gastrodon as well, because, you know, either way, you either put the Cortana to sleep, or, you know, you just mitigate some damage. It's time for but Big Groudon. Looks like Chongjun likes his board position now, going to go for a Dynamax here, and it is going to be that Groudon. The Groudon again. Definitely, without the Charizard, an obvious candidate to get Dynamax. The Gastrodon, not a bad competitor either, but the Groudon's in perfect position right now. Doesn't feel scared, really, of what's going on. The He's only protecting. The only thing be a problem would be the fake out, but that doesn't matter because you're Dynamax now. You just get to start firing off Max Quakes. Good targeting there on the Incineroar, getting rid of that Shooker Berry, but getting the special defense boost, most importantly. So even if this Kyogre is forced into attacking in the sun, it's going to do even less damage. Mm-hmm. Despite that sugar berry as well, that Incineroar is still taking so much. But we will see that this Incineroar is going to use parting shots, so this will help to neutralize some of the damage coming out from that Groudon, despite not being able to catch it with the Intimidate. And Aaron once again gets to put something else into that slot that might be more advantageous to help out this Kyogre. It's going to be that Zacian. Needs something offensive. This has got to that point in the game where Chongjun's in a very solid position. He's got control of the weather. He's got his Dynamax in a very nice, safe spot and is just Ooh. able to start throwing out damage. Aaron needs to put damage down. He's not put I like this position so far on any of the Pokemon uh, that Chongjun uh, has shown, which is all of his team. Both trainers actually revealing all of their team, so needs to get the damage out. Zashun's obviously a good way to do it. And now Chongjun is faced with a tough decision, I think. Do you leave 
the Gastrodon in and just try and get stuff dealt with with the Yawn. The Gastrodon obviously causing problems for the Kyogre. Or do you just pivot quickly to the Incineroar and say, I need the Intimidate on this Zashi? Kadana? Incineroar. Okay. I think the that probably makes more right sense. Call here just to be able to help out with the Groudon. Um, so we're going to see that pivot first, but let's see what's going to happen with the Gastro. It does look like it's also yep. going to switch out, and we will see the call and response of the Incineroar to drop the attack of that Zacian as well. Nicely done by Chongju in identifying that the Kyogre may leave. You don't need Gastron on the field if Kyogre's not there. Get your Incineroar in and get down that Intimidate. Yeah, you're getting some damage down with the Zacian. Zacian. Does start to go for a bear play though. Aaron did need to get some damage down, but look at that. It's just not enough. Uh, it's gonna be a three hit knockout if he keeps going with that route. And while he's trying to do that, he's gonna get hit with Max. Yeah, we knew Incineroar was yeah, going down Incineroar here. Now is going to be knocked out for Aaron, which means that you really only have three well, you still have three big offensive threats, but you don't have the ability to really be able to mitigate that damage now incoming from Chongjun's team. No, no more pivoting around throw attacks down and with the speed advantage on his Zacian, if that comes back in, he's going to be able to really clean up with it, I think. There's no speed control, once again, from Aaron Bort to this game, and he's just Well, that's not just, that's just not true. He has Airstream on Cortana. Uncontested. Even the Behemoth Blade not bringing it below half. I don't imagine there's a world where he's going to be able to get a knockout this following turn, and to make it worse, there's the potential to just get parking shot as well. So the Zacian would get stuck on the field. Aaron's back into a very similar position as game one, where his pivots are so limited now he's lost a Pokemon early, or earlier than his opponent at least, and those pivots and switches could be punished. The Kyogre coming in though, does regain in control of the weather, that could be huge, but that's two max quakes, so this Groudon's still feeling pretty good. And this Behemoth Blade's going to do a lot. Yeah, not on top of that too, there's still that threat of the Gastrodon in the back for Chongjun, so it doesn't really make it safe to go for something like a Water Spout. Um, this is still going to be a pretty tough position. Water Spout plus B-Blade should definitely kill this Warden. Aaron's team has to be able to deal damage, and that Groudon is going to be quite low. But maybe you can also read into that a little bit if we do see a bit of a switch, but we will see the fake, no, fake out, out. Yep. go into the Kyogre. Kyogre is going to have to take that chip damage. And now Zashian going for another Behemoth Blade, really hoping this time to be able to take out this target. Groudon, once again, going to be taking damage, but still not enough to be able to finish it off. No, uh, no Well, we're in the rain, that. though, so Zashian should be okay. Is capitalized on yeah, it doesn't do a thing. Uh, Chong Jun going for the Max Flare. Yes, it's super effective. Yes, it's also in the rain, so the damage is limited. But that Kyogre switch in to control the weather, immediately taken away from it by smart use of the Max Flare in the final turn of the game. Of course, the Kyogre now, uh, the Groudon, sorry, much, much lower, able, of course, to get easily knocked out, but it does sort of force the, the Kyogre, if it wants to end the game in its preferred weather, forcing the Kyogre out once again and, and coming back. But getting the damage down on Groudon, I think, is, is really, really important. Well, the other thing is, if I'm not mistaken, Adam, I think Aaron still has Dynamax available. He does. So that could be a very good way to maintain control of the weather or that just sounds be able risky. to ensure that you have a large amount of damage if you are able to remove the Incineroar or at least remove one of the bigger threats on the team coming in from Chongjun. The, the use of Dynamax is going to be Aaron's way back into the game. If you can get the Kartana in safely and maybe Dynamax that, get some max airstreams going uh, to deal with that Zashin that Chongjun has in the back, that could be huge. Uh, it was in the back now, it's uh, back out onto the field of play, um, but it's going to start applying pressure. And the problem is, is you need a little bit of time. You need to get something like the Kartana in, and that's really tough to do uh, when you're facing down the Zashin, which is just going top speed, throwing down damage every single time. Another double switch here from Chongjun to be able to just kind of change the board state around. That Gastrodon is going to receive a special attack boost from the Water Spout, but Zacian is still that does so little. to take some of that damage. It's going to get hurt a little bit, but I'd say it's still pretty healthy. And it doesn't need much health to move first and throw down a big attack like a Bama Blade or, or a Sacred Sword. So I'm um, feeling pretty good in Chongjun's shoes right now. Knows, of course, it's going to win that. Uh, but the Pokemon advantage is going to be essential as well, being able to switch around a little bit more. Oh, he does Max Kyogre this game. Out of Aaron getting control of, of the board a little bit more with those secondary effects will be his way back into this game. 
here comes the Dynamax Kyogre. Oh, this makes sense. What I'm really excited to see is what does Aaron decide to go for the, in terms of the max moves here with that Gastrodon on the field. The move choice is absolutely essential here uh, to see what he can do. Of course, you're going to have to be taking attacks first from the Zashians. We'll get to the Kyogre in a minute. Uh, Chengju and Zashian dishing out immense amount of damage from that behemoth blade but sacred sword will bring chongju and zashi into about half of the max lightning here should go into the zashian and be able to clean it up and more importantly set the electric terrain in case gastrodon wants to go for yawn i'm glad aaron set that up because the gastrodon sort of looking to maybe try and close out the game with the yawns there's one of them and it's not going to matter because of the electric terrain you don't even get to connect the first part of the move let alone the sleep on the following turn i think aaron's just made a very very big pivot to potentially get back in this game now the fastest thing on the field is his zashian he's also got the kartana in the back i love that choice of the max lightning so so well done and this kyoga it's not worried about its health anymore because it's going probably for max geyser uh, you know we'll be able to control the weather well, it's not going for better. max geyser Aaron's really open the door for himself the gastrodon right on him play yeah this is absolutely a good position to be in right now but it still remains to be seen how much this kyogre is going to be able to get done yeah with well, double brown type poses a, a bit of a problem and, and without being able to get in his own kartana to deal with that gastrodon you have given over to it a plus one attack boost absolutely and i think honestly if you're aaron as wild as it sounds you probably just want the zashian to get knocked out here if you're chongju don't give him that i know you don't want to take the damage but just be so careful if you let that katana come in that katana is just going to leaf blade your gastrodon away uh, of course the gastron could buy some time potentially um but you know the zashian's just getting intimidated and chongjun does want to leave it on the field i think um just getting intimidated getting whittled down yeah this is the problem a very treacherously low amount of health but zashian just going for it i guess the ground on the way in oh yeah, that's a great show there oh. unfortunately it's not going to be enough to be able to knock it out oh and no can fire oh. Back with an Earth that's power. so bad this does give Aaron that free switch into the cartana uh, and Chongjun also does not get a free switch into the Incineroar. Uh, the, is the pure is right now walled out of the game. psychological damage do that does. Max moves on its third turn of Dynamax. It's got Origin Pulse and Water Spout, which are going to turn, obviously, into the max move for Water, which is going to get redirected. Then you've got Max Lightning available, and that's not going to hit either of these ground types. So this final turn is, of course, uh, you know, really null and void. The Kartana needs to knock out the Gastrodon before the uh, Kyogre, can the, the Kyogre is really able to do anything in this turn. Uh, Max Geyser would, of course, be the preferred option to, to wrap this game up. But the Kartana is not Dynamax, and the Gastrodon can just protect as well. So a lot of decision making here for Aaron. I think if Aaron just protect can Fire Punch or things, Fire type uh, move you know, onto the, the Kartana, it seems like it ends the game. Go after the, uh, oh, off, but it Why didn't he protect? gets knocked out here by a leaf blade which leaves the door wide open for this kyogre to fire off an attack and that beast boost is i don't understand bringing cartana to plus one and it is the max yep. geyser it will connect onto the crowd on here bringing chongjun down to his final pokemon in this game number two it will be that incineroar that has to switch in uh, the incineroar has to switch in in the rain against the cartana and a kyogre i don't really see much out for this the Pivotal turn was Aaron committing to the Dynamax Kyogre. Absolutely love that. The Max Lightning getting that electric terrain up, taking away the Gastron's ability to yawn things and cause problems that way is going to be sending us a really good set. So nicely done for Aaron. Of course, there's Fake Out this turn that he has to worry about, but a double protect, you're fine. Doesn't matter. He's going to be able to land an attack on the Incineroar anyway, and there's no way Incineroar has the damage to deal with this. Yeah, it's going to be a quick forfeit there from Chongjun to wrap up this game number two. And so I don't understand. I'm going to I'm going to try and talk talk through this. So I guess the thought process Chong uh, Chongjun went through is that Aaron knows his Groudon is a salt vest. So he knows that Leaf Blade into that slot is a guaranteed KO. So he's probably going to go for that. But what I'm thinking is, is if he goes for that, I guess if he goes for that, then 
Gastrodon gets to... How old was his Kyogre at, at that point? And his Kyogre was healthy, so it's not like he gets to Earth Power away his Kyogre by, if he does that. And that turn, Kyogre goes out of Dynamax. And in the rain, I don't think Flare Blitz would kill the Kartana. Maybe it would have. So maybe the idea was get that right and kill Kartana. But I don't know that calc, honestly. But if I was him, what I would what I think I would have done, and I could be not thinking ahead enough because I guess it's obvious these these are both much better players than I am, is I would have tried to protect the Gastrodon and gone for the fire type move into the into the uh the Kartana. That should kill the Kartana. Oh, I think it would kill the Kartana. Maybe it wouldn't in the rain. I don't know. I don't know the rain wasn't up yet. So yeah, that would have killed the Kartana. Uh, Gastrodon would have been safe from water... Or, Grata would have been safe from Kyogre. And then at that point, he wins. Maybe I'm not respecting uh, what happens if he goes into the Groudon enough. Because like, he knew Aaron's set, because Aaron revealed all of his moves over the course of the top eight. The Max Lightning, the two Water-type moves protect. So we knew he couldn't do anything if Gastrodon stuck around. So I think I would have valued protecting Gastrodon more. Huh. I don't know. Let's get into the last game. The third and final game of this Grand Finals at the Salt Lake City Regional Championships. We're going to see these leads and how this concludes as Aaron leads with Zacian and Indeedee. And we will see Chongjun choose the Zacian and the Incineroar. Aaron going back to the game one lead that definitely uh, didn't quite work out for him. Must feel that there's a different line of play available with the Indeedee in this one. Or back to the Indeedee. To make sure that the Psychic Surge goes up and sort of limits the options available for the Incineroar. But... This looks just like game number one. Chongjun has the Intimidate down, took away the boost that Zashin got on the way in, or it's taking it away now. I'm a little bit ahead of myself there. Uh, and again, you know, Aaron's trailer is now doing less damage and moving slower than Chongjun's. I'm hoping he's got an answer for it somewhere in the back, because otherwise it could run away and, and take a really big advantage early on. There's so, I mean, and Didi has so much utility though as well. Besides just you know the follow me that we are we have seen it for. Maybe it is going to just set the terrain and also leave the field. Uh, but you know, this is definitely going to be another slow played game. We don't have the explosive pressure of the Charizard and the Groudon combination that Chongjun has relied upon in so many matches previous. And if the first two games are any indicator, it's still going to continue to be switches around the board until somebody starts to feel comfortable. Oh. So, wait helping a minute, hand. Here, though, Ndidi is going to stick on the field as the Gastrodon moves in, and that helping hand is really going to be able to power up the next move coming out from Aaron Zashian, but not before it is going to take a bit of damage on its own. But is the damage on the return going to be enough? It's the Sacred Sword into oh. the Gastrodon. Not what you wanted. When I don't think Aaron's Aaron, sacred swords on the have ever the gone his way. The intimidate and get that extra damage down. So a lovely switch from Chongjun, seeing that as a potential option. And now the Zashian matchup, the mirror is so heavily weighted in Chongjun's favor. He's not taking any damage on his. He's still at full attack. He's feeling really, really good about it. And you know, if I think if Aaron had targeted down the opposing Zashian, could have been a little bit closer. But Chongjun has his Zashian at full health, top speed could easily tidy up Aaron Zashin in this following turn. It almost forces Aaron into a position to either switch out the Zashian or to go for something like a follow me mm -hmm. to make sure that it can get off the second attack. But then you are also a bit vulnerable to whatever this Gastron decides to throw at you. Mm -hmm. Or if anything just decides to switch. So many questions need to be answered here. But it's just going to be attacks Ooh. across the board. Ooh. Chung Jung Zashian moving first. But it's okay. going to be Indeedee not targeting okay. down Aaron Zashian. Okay, so it does live that without that the crit. Will hang on just a little bit as Zashian goes for I wonder if it's a roll. Sword into the it's probably EV to survive it. And Indeedee Indeed. safeguarding here against something that might be coming out from this Gastro, Ooh. which is going to be the yawn. That's pretty cool. No to sleep. Electric terrain from the Max Lightning. Uh, being able to set up the safeguard nicely done 
by Aaron. And now this Gastrodon is forced to, to play the game a little bit differently, right? Gastrodon has to really start going after things with its attacks. Of course, both the Pokemon on Aaron's side of the field are getting dangerously low on health. The it, it really bothers me that the, one didn't get critical the sprites in the top don't bounce in the sink. That attack from she really bothers me. But his Pokemon are low, and that's a concern if you're Aaron, right? The indeed he could easily get felled by the Zashian. The Zashian, as we've seen, isn't outputting enough damage to really be a concern. And, and to guarantee at least one attack, you have to follow me with the indeed which means you can't helping hand, which means your damage output is just low. Yeah, here comes the follow me. Going to redirect at least this Zashian's attack. So here comes the Behemoth Blade. Will be plenty to knock out this Ndidi, but I feel like Ndidi has got the job done. The Psychic Terrain is set. The Safeguard is up. And so it can go down a champion. Also eating a critical hit on the way out as well. The poor Ndidi. It's been a critical hit by the Zashian on the other side. The Zashian on Aaron's side, though, pivoting over to the Behemoth Blade. No more Sacred Sword. And finally getting some damage down on Chongzhen Zashian. Yeah, I mean, at this point as well, you just want to try to get as much damage in as possible. That Gastrodon and that Zacian are so low. This is so, so bad. So despite Aaron losing two Pokemon here, he does get two free switches into his final two. And these Pokemon on the other side are quite low. That's what I was worried about for Aaron, was he's going to lose both his Pokemon in this turn. Once you take away the Gastrodon's ability to yawn and play that game, you force it into attacks. And one of those attacks being Earth Power just easily deals with the Zacian, which was taking hits early doors. This now forces a pair of Pokemon on the field, the final two for Aaron Trailer, and, and that means that this is his only opportunity to set up Drizzle, unless he goes for Max Geysers, which he can't do right now, because the Gastrodon can maybe buy some time to avoid those. It could be a bit of a problem. I don't uh, think Aaron can know, win. If that Groudon's in the back, that Groudon's going to come in, set Drought, and just say absolutely not to this Kyogre. That said, the Kartana's in, they're both full health, and what really matters here, and what I would be shocked if I didn't see, is Aaron has to Dynamax, he has to make the right choice for Dynamax, and be able to capitalize on it so well. So the Kartana Dynamaxes can easily deal with that Gastrodon, can deal with the Groudon as well, with the max overgrowth, but you're leaving the, the Zashin unchecked, and the Zashin can just start wailing on the Kartana. You then need your Kyogre to be able to put down enough damage to deal with this Zashin, and there's the Dynamax, it's the Beast Ball, so it's Kartana getting the the Dynamax in this game, and that, that is, in my opinion, the right decision. Aaron relying on this Pokemon to sweep through four, alongside the help of Kyogre, but mainly the Kartana, sweeping through Chongjun's team. Well, before Aaron is really going to be able to make a move, well, no, it looks like the Kyogre is going to protect first, mm -hmm. but... You know, they think that's really smart, just in case you want to go for something else. But the play run Ooh, also going big. into the protect here, which is going to leave Chongjun wide open. Yeah, a max okay. airstream now going through, and that's going to help out immensely, oh. despite the Gastrodon hanging on. It does hang on, but it does now mean that the Kartana is faster than this Zashian, and a big boost for the Kyogre is going to help out as well. The Earth Power into the Kartana doesn't really do that much damage, and of course, this Gastrodon just hanging on. Speed boost, really, really nice. That's what Aaron talked about in his interview earlier. Now he's going to be able to control the speed. And I guess a water spout kills this guy, this uh, Zacian, right? A limited. Uh, if the Groudon comes in and sets up the sun with drought. Oh, I just like this Kartana going fast, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, that Max Airstream is so big because you should be faster than the Zacian now, and now you have so much more utility to work with as you know that you you have your last two Pokemon remaining. Those speed boosts are going to stick as long as your Pokemon are still alive to do the job. And that Gastrodon is so low that that one piece of the puzzle could be completely removed here. Max Knuckle to be able to go in to finish the job onto the Gastrodon, get that plus one and that beast. I like the Max Knuckle. Yeah, a double boost there for the Kartana. If the Kartana can Means make it through this won't do anything crazy this turn. In the following turn. That's not really the concern. But of course, this is the Pokemon. It's got a sweep, and it's getting itself in the position to do that. A speed boost, attack boost. Kyoga single target water spout still in the rain with the boost, just deals with the Zashian. It's now it's forced into the Incineroar and the Mystery Fourth from Chong Jun. Uh, the weirdness has disappeared from Battlefield, which means fake out is an option, but it's not an option on the Kartana next turn, and I guarantee you that Kartana is the fastest thing on the field, and it's got the highest attack on the field. This is looking real good for Aaron right now. Does just need to make sure that he can navigate this ground on. Kyogre, step aside. This is now the Kartana show. 
Yeah, I, I mean, you know, if we wanted to see something from the Incineroar, maybe it is going to be something like a Flare Blitz, potentially. You know, Fake Out could come in, Protect could come in from the Kyogre, though, and Weather has been given over to Chongjin. Mm. It has, but it's really not the Kyogre. Chongjin hasn't Dynamaxed anymore. yet. I think it's all about this Kartana, making sure the targeting is right. A max overgrowth after a plus two. Oh, now plus one because of the Intimidate. I don't think but plus one overgrowth kills uh, kills Groudon, though. That is a little bit scary, if you ask me. Of course, Chongjun does have access to the Dynamax to round out this game. It's going to be the Groudon. That makes so much sense. And this Groudon needs to get through the next couple turns. Aaron's not afraid either in the sun to just keep attacking with the Kyogre. And that, though, if you leave the Kyogre alone, those bits of damage are going to add up. I know, but you have to remember that there are two uh, Pokemon on the field. Yeah, I think. This to super effective fire type attacks, but it's the max overgrowth from this Kartana at plus one into the Groudon. And it is not going Ooh. to be enough to knock it out just yet. You do set up the grassy terrain for potential return attacks, but it is going to come down to what this Groudon decides to do. Max the Max flat. Flare now coming out into the Kartana. And unfortunately, Kartana is going to go down to that. That uh, Chongjun set himself up so well. I was wondering how much impact the Intimidate would have taking away that plus two, and it's just not enough. The Max Overgrowth needed to knock out the Grout on there, or the, um, the Bring Incineroar. it low enough, potentially. The Incineroar needed to uh, not fake out the, the Kyogre. The Kyogre needed to follow up with something in that turn as well, and without that happening, Chongjun has put himself in pole position to take this one. Kyogre is Watch gonna fight out, back though. though. Not oh, enough. Not quite enough here to be able to knock it out. So now Groudon gets to go for a Max Quake into this Kyogre. And that should be plenty of HP there for that Incineroar to be able to make the final move. Special defense boost going across the board just in case. But the Darkest Lariat now to come out from Chongjun Peng to finish off this Kyogre and become your Salt Lake City Regional Champion. Chongjun held that. Right. Uh, congratulations to Chongjun. Uh, he played super well. It was a really weird spot at the end for Eren. Uh, he knew plus one uh he knew plus one Kartana wasn't going to kill Groudon. Uh, he knew that Assault Vest in the sun, Groudon is not going to take as much as he needs it to from Kyogre. I think the only way he won that game is if for some reason Chongyun put both of his attacks into Kyogre that turn. Uh, but that wasn't going to happen. So, uh, that is everything I got for you today. Uh, let me know what down in the comments if you like this kind of content where I break down much better players uh, playing a game at a level I probably don't actually understand. Uh, but my point of view might be easier to understand than theirs is. Uh, so thanks as always. Uh, I've gotten coaching from Aaron Trailer before. He is fantastic. I'm going to put a link to his Metify uh, in the description. I don't think Chan Yun does anything like that, but I'm going to double check on Twitter before I post this video. Uh, thanks to both of them for giving me permission to make this. Uh, and I really look forward to the rest of the season. Thanks and bye.